Okay. Let's do it. Terrence Crawford versus Felix Diaz Jr. Terrence Crawford, 30 wins, 21 by KO. Felix Diaz Jr., 19 wins, 9 by KO. Felix Diaz Jr., while he, he's not a, a knockout artist, he's a aggressive brawler. He's a pressure fighter. He likes to come forward and really make it a fight. He has some notable accomplishments. Felix Diaz Jr. was a 2008 Olympic gold medalist, so he's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. He's a tricky lefty. You know, he's, again, he's a kind of an aggressive brawler to come forward aggressive brawler and he's a lefty so I mean if you're not a master boxer he can really give you problems this is the Terrence Crawford knockout streak series this is the second second fight of the knockout streak the first one was against John Molina and this one is against Felix Diaz Jr. let's begin Round one. Diaz's goal is, is to get close to Crawford. That's that's his goal. Right now, Crawford is going to use his reach advantage and his uh, mastery of distance to prevent that from happening. Boxing is the manipulation of distance and timing to control the line. Felix Diaz wants to close the gap to get on Terrence Crawford's line in order to land his punches. Terrence Crawford, right now, he's using his footwork to prevent Felix Diaz to get on his line. He's using his footwork in a combination of his, his jab, his right hand jab. Diaz try to slip on the line. Terrence Crawford slips off the line. If you notice right there, I, I believe that's the first instance of the clinch. Terrence Crawford is the master of all distances. Right now he's fighting on the, off, uh, on the outside and he's sliding right off the line. But he could fight you know, in the mid range on the line and he also could fight in the pocket. What he does in this in this fight, anytime um, Diaz close close the distance and get in the pocket, Crawford would just clinch him, turn him, and put him on the ropes. Crawford is just sliding off the line. He's able to punch going backwards. Most people can't fight going back. Most people can't punch going back. Crawford with good ring generalship, he's able to go both to his right and to his left. All right, so Felix Diaz, he's making a small adjustment. He's seeing how difficult it is for Crawford I mean, difficult it is for him to close the gap and get on the line. So what he's what he's trying to do now is he's trying to follow Crawford's jab. So when, when Crawford throws a jab, Philip Diaz is going to attack off of that jab. That's his plan. Is you know. All right, round one. What we've seen in round one was that Crawford has a, uh, a mastery of footwork, so Diaz couldn't close the gap to get to Crawford, and, and that's the only way he can win is to close the gap, get to Crawford, make it a uh, throw throw exchanges, make it a, make it a fight, not a boxing match, a fight. He has to close the gap, get inside, and throw a combination. Try to land combinations to Crawford's body, and hopefully you can land a, a big shot up top to hurt Crawford. That's that's Diaz's goal, and that's his plan. So Crawford's plan is to 
maintain his distance to control the line. So what I mean by controlling the line is when you're on the line, you're close enough to punch your opponent. Crawford, his line, you know, he has a little bit more range in his line. Round two. You see how Diaz wants to get close. Crawford using his footwork to maintain his distance. Crawford doesn't just push his his punches in and he could punch going backwards. That's just a perfect illustration of it. His, he could just punch going backwards. Diaz trying to bait Crawford in. Diaz having a hard time getting to Crawford, so he says, hey, come to me. Crawford, he, he instinctively understood that and he didn't take the bait. He's using that 74 inch reach advantage in that outside fight. All right, so Diaz just made it, the adjustment that I talked about earlier, where he's trying to follow Crawford's jab. You know, so yeah, effectively clinch. Diaz got got on the inside, or got in the pocket. Crawford was effectively able to clinch him. Crawford using his uh, his milling a little bit with his lead hand, kind of throwing, just subtly throwing, throwing off Diaz uh, timing. Boxing is a manipulation of distance and timing. You need to have your opponent's timing, timing to counter him. Crawford expertly uses his footwork to move right and left to keep the fight where he wants to keep it. That's the thing. Crawford has mastery of, of footwork to keep the fight where he wants to keep it. He, again, over under position, the 50-50 position. When, when Diaz get on, Get in the pocket, Crawford ties him up, hit him with the overhook, underhook, and then he spins him and put him on the ropes. Oof. Crawford is a very explosive fighter. He's fast. He's a great athlete. He's strong, he's he's fast. Yeah, again, at, at, the, at this time, we knew Crawford was, a, again, look how Crawford was able to clinch, spin the ass, put him on the ropes. At this time, we knew Crawford was a great fighter, but we didn't just we didn't know he was an all-time great fighter. Crawford was able to manage his distance. He had, Crawford is able to step backwards, hit a counter, uh, left uppercut. Crawford has power in both of his hands. You know, you, you put your power hand in the back, but Crawford has power in both hands. Definitely, he's able, Crawford's able to move, punch by going backwards, take the angle. You know, Diaz wants to bully him, get in, get on the inside and beat Crawford up. Crawford just would not allow that to happen. He would not allow that to happen. Crawford has great footwork. He, Crawford can maneuver. He can maneuver in, in all ranges. And we all know Crawford is a dog, so you're not going to intimidate Crawford. All right, all right. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. All right, round. This is round three. Oof. Crossbury is explosive. He threw that left hand and came back with that right hook. You see how Crawford just slides right off the line, slides backwards, and then he's able to maneuver to his right. Now 
again, Crawford with um, the overhook, bicep control. Crawford is a wrestler. Maintaining his distance. Push back. Crawford is establishing a little rhythm. That rhythm oftentimes disguises your movement. Crawford with the check. He's able to quickly move his feet. Crawford is a 5 2 player. You know, in baseball, they say you're a 5 2 player. Crawford is a 5 2 player. Um, he has fast hands, fast feet, great reaction time. He's strong, punch with power. He has a great chin. I mean, he, he, he has all the attributes. I mean, that's one of the reasons why he's an all time great fighter. And he has supreme skill. So, Crawford is a 5 2 tool boxer. Again, Crawford is able to maintain his distance. Once again, on the inside, he's effective in the clinch. He's effective in the clinch. Subtle, subtle footwork, subtle footwork. Again, the over under position. Crawford with his back foot movement. He, he controls the distance using his back foot. Pushes off with his front foot. And he controls his distance with his back foot. You know, you're doing one of three things in, in, in a fight at all times. You're either attacking or leading. You're going to you either defend or you're either counter punching. And by maintaining distance, you're counter punching. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. By maintaining distance, you, you display an effective defense. Your opponent has to be on your line to hit you. And, and by using moving his back foot, using his back foot to to maintain his distance, now allowing Diaz to get on the line. You gotta be focused every second of every minute of every round. And and by what I mean is you can't just you gotta be doing one of three things. You gotta be leading defending or countering, you know, and if you defending without, you know, just maintain the distance is, is defending. Maintain the distance is defending because when you maintain your distance, you prevent, you, you prevent your opponent for, from hitting you. Okay, round four. Crawford using a great jab. Look at the way Crawford is able to maneuver. Again, once the clinch comes, I mean, once Diaz get in, in range, he clinched. Diaz is a little frustrated. Try to use his head. <laughs> Diaz is frustrated. Frustration is definitely showing. This is a bad matchup for Diaz. It really is. This is just a bad matchup. I mean, Styles make fighting. <laughs> Terrence Crawford is all wrong, pretty much for everybody, but, you know, Philly Diaz is just the perfect fighter. These type of fighters, Terrence Crawford just eats them for breakfast, no problem. If you notice how Terrence Crawford moves his back foot, that's defense. That's preemptive defense. You know, even though punch is not thrown, it's preemptive. Terrence Crawford showing just how comfortable he is in the pocket, in the clinch, no problem. He can hold his ground when he needs to. You know, Terrence Crawford is just kind of 
I believe, because in this round, Terrence Clawford been holding his ground more and fighting on the inside more. You know, I believe this was just kind of a psychological pl ploy, you know, to, to let let Felix know nice counter left hook. I mean, I'm sorry, let, nice counter left uppercut. But I think it was a ploy to let Felix Diaz know that you're not going to bully me. I, I'm a lie on you. To, you know, I'm doing whatever I want. And if we get on the inside, I could beat you up on the inside as well. I'm strong with you. But by being on the inside, that's that's the only way Diaz can win is, is by being on the inside and, and, and making it an ugly fight. I mean, he has no other path to victory. So a Crawford being a smart fighter, he's not going to continue this strategy, you know, throughout the whole fight. But he still wanted to show him that if he wanted to, he could get up in there and beat you up on the inside. Great uppercuts by Terrence Crawford. Crawford using his length now in range. Crawford with a uh, overtie, overhook, bicep control. Diaz hit him with the <laughs> up, uh, hit, but Diaz super frustrated. Just nothing Diaz can do with him. Absolutely nothing Diaz could do with Terrence Crawford. Okay, round five. Let's go. So last round, Terrence Crawford kind of fought on the inside more. This round, he's coming out. With, with his jab, he's using that 74 inch reach advantage that he has, the reach that he has. He's using his footwork to maintain his distance. Box arena is called a square circle. So, you know, as you can see, Crawford is not being driven to the ropes. He's effectively going left and right. And then when Diaz is able to get in the pocket, Crawford is is very effective in the clinch. Great left-handed uppercut. I mean, Crawford is amazing. Again, clinch, turn them, put them on a rope, push off, get your, get your reach. I mean, get your uh, distance. Crawford is very strong in it shows in his match, but it's not it's not obvious in his match. You know, uh, on the inside, during the clinch, Crawford can hold his own. He can hold up to Diaz, Diaz's um, aggressive brawling style. He can, he can hold up to it. He can hold his ground if he wanted to. He, didn't, he don't have to. It, it, there's no reason to hold your ground all the time when Crawford could just sniper him to death and use his maneuverability in his footwork to control the distance and timing and, and the control when the exchanges have to take place. That's the, that's the thing with footwork. If you got superior footwork, you can often control when the exchanges take place. Again, Crawford ties him up, turns him, put him on the ropes. Using his back foot to maintain distance, which is, I call it defense. Nice check hook by Crawford. Using that 74 inch reach. Nice counter jab, I am mean, counter uppercut. You're doing one of three things. You're either attacking, defending, or countering. Nice. Wow, that's crazy. Again, like I say, Crawford is a five-tool player. He has quick feet. He has quick feet, quick hands, 
power, a great chin, and reflexes. I mean, he's a five-tool player. And he has the skills to boot, you know, so. Counter, uh, Crawford put a nice pull counter. Wow, man. Maintain his deep, perfect, perfect um, distance and then attack with a lead left hand, straight left hand. Felix Diaz having a tough time in there against the all time great Crawford. Let's get it. Right now, Crawford totally has uh, Diaz time. He just has his time. He totally has his timing out. Diaz just can't effectively get on Crawford's line. He can't close the gap. Crawford just slides just the right amount of distance and, and counter punch him. He's letting him run into his left uppercuts now. I mean, he's just throwing combinations at will. Once Diaz get on the line or get in the pocket, Crawford effectively ties him up, spin him, push him on the ropes. Crawford is using his reach advantage to land those great jabs. Now Crawford is going towards Diaz, which is something Diaz wants. Crawford says he's not going to fall for those traps. <laughs> Diaz tried to set a trap. Now Crawford is kind of trolling him a little bit. I don't blame Diaz trying to bait Crawford in because Diaz is having an extremely hard time getting to Crawford effectively. Crawford just slides right off the line in his perfect distance and able to land his punches. Crawford totally has Diaz timing now. Again, Diaz, once Diaz get on inside, Crawford effectively ties him up. That wrestling background. Crawford is styling on Diaz now. I mean, he, he has his timing. He's pretty much dancing in front of him now. He, his rhythm. Oh, man. Diaz is getting frustrated. You, you can just tell he's getting frustrated. He's trying as hard as he gets to Crawford, but Crawford, he's, again, once once he get on the inside, Crawford effectively ties him up with in a 50-50 position, over-under position, and, and spins him. Crawford is a physically strong man. He's hitting him with counter uppercuts from both hands now. That was a heck of a round, round six. I believe DS's corner is very, very concerned now. Crawford's corner, of course, know they have this fight in hand. I believe they know it's just a matter of time. Crawford with that 74 inch reach advantage is, is making use of his reach advantage. Round seven.
Crawford is not moving far off the line now. He's just sliding, sliding just enough to allow his punches to land and, and Diaz punches to miss. It takes amazing footwork to do it. Crawford can fight going forward and backwards. Them subtle, subtle movement, subtle footwork. Again, I have to say this. Again, boxing is the manipulation of distance and timing. And Terrence Crawford is a master of both distance and timing. Once Felix Diaz get him get in the pocket, Terrence Crawford essentially just put him in the over under position and turn him and put him on the ropes. Crawford slides off, hit him with the one, two. Crawford got caught a little bit. This is boxing. Yeah, it's going for broke. And I don't blame him. You got to go for broke. Crawford with a nice counter uppercut. Again, Crawford turns him and spins him. He yeah, has coming all, uh, all out, coming forward, trying to make it a fight. Doing what he, he feel he has to do to win this fight. But Crawford is now matching him. He, he, he's allowing... He's allowing Diaz to get close. Crawford is strong. He has, he has, he has the measure of Diaz. So he's not worried about his strength. Look at that body shot. Crawford, uh, Diaz is on the ropes. Crawford turned him, put him on the ropes. Diaz. Only way he can win is to is to make it a firefight. But you can't even win by making a firefight with Crawford. Crawford is about to dominate on the inside. He's on the inside. A little bit of a uh, bicep control. Touch to the body. Touch to the body with uh and then came back up top. Then hit him with the right hook. Crawford fights on his terms. He's not gonna allow you to fight on your terms. If you want to come in, nope. Look at Trump patrolling his opponent. <laughs> and, and, and Diaz is trying to bait Crawford. He's setting the trap. You know, he, he can't get to Crawford unless Crawford allows Diaz to get to him. So he's trying to bait him. Now this, this round, Crawford decided to fight him. On the line. Crawford decided to fight him on the line. Beginning around eight. Crawford having fun answering to the music. Crawford is just totally relaxed. He's in his rhythm. He would not allow <laughs> Diaz to bait him in. You you would not fight. Crawford would not fight on Another fighter's terms. He's going to fight on his own terms. And, and Diaz is doing the right thing. You know, he can't get to Crawford. Crawford is piecing him up every time Diaz tries to close the gap and get on the line. So he's like, if I can't get to Crawford, then Crawford needs to come to me. And I can understand that. But Crawford is, is a master boxer. He understands and he's not going to fall, fall for traps. This is just a master class right now. Oh man. You know, the uh, the distance management, the fight moving backwards, and then when Diaz is Oh my goodness. When Diaz is on a, on, you know in the pocket Crawford, effectively ties him up. Effectively clinch. Yes, sir. Robert is is a master in all ranges. Outside, on the line, and in the pocket. Robert using his long arms. Look at clinch game. Clinch game tight.
Diaz is totally befuddled now. I mean, he, he just, he has no clue what to do. He's nothing, nothing bad about Diaz. I mean, he is an Olympic gold medalist, but we're talking about an all-time great. Maybe we didn't know at the time of this fight, but it's clear now that Crawford is an all-time great, so pretty sure he'd do this to pretty much everyone. Yeah, he has done it. Pretty much everyone. Remember, Crawford is on an 11 fight knockout streak. And one of those knockouts is against Earl Spence Jr., who's one of the, uh, you know, today's best welterweight. So. Crawford is just asserting his dominance now. He's an alpha dog. Yes, sir. Julius and Dungo, Crawford's next victim. Yeah, Crawford's next victim. All right, let's see some. Crawford's fighting on the line, his hand speed, his precision. Yeah, he's just. I'm in awe of every time I watch Terrence Crawford. He's just an amazing boxer. An amazing boxer. All right, round nine. Yeah, it's trying to bait. Crawford in, Crawford is not taking the, taking the bait. He will not fall into that trap. He hurt him with that straight left. Crawford fighting it on the outside, staying on the outside. Just piecing, piecing Diaz up. Diaz is trying his best to draw Crawford in, but Crawford is, is, is working within his range. He, he, he's working on the outside range, he's using his reach advantage. Crawford, he's not falling in with his punches. He's he's very controlled. And when uh, Diaz try to close the gap, Crawford just slides back and counter punch, using mostly his his right hook. Faint jab, faint jab, me. Crawford probably is trying to get Diaz to follow his jab like Diaz was doing in the earlier rounds. Diaz is, I don't want to say he's, he's broken, but his spirit, he, he, it's just, it's kind of the beginning of the end. Diaz is just totally, totally befuddled. He just, it's just nothing that he could do. It's just a terrible matchup for him. Diaz is trying his best to be Crawford to, to fall in so he could exchange with Crawford. But Crawford would not take that trap. He not, won't take the bait. And then when Diaz try to close the gap, Crawford just take us, he just slides backwards and counter punch. Crawford is maintaining that uh that perfect distance where his the 74 inch reach is it's just too much for Diaz to handle. Right now at this point Crawford is clinical. He's totally clinical. He's taking his time. You know, Diaz try to work the exchanges. He, he try his best to work the exchanges. In this fight, Crawford landed 59% of his power shots. 59% of his power shots.
Joe Diaz taking a long look at his at his fighter. Terrence Crawford just effectively slides off the line and throws counter punch. Joel Diaz. Felix Diaz coach is taking a long look at, at his at his opponent. I mean at his at his fighter. You know. The doctors are coming in. Doctors coming in. Checking on him. Uh, I, yeah, he's taking a lot of damage. All right, round 10, the last round. Terrence Crawford, it's just clinical at this point. He has, I mean, he, he's literally styling, styling on Felix Diaz. He hit a, he he's hitting him with anything he wants. He's fighting at whatever range he wants. There's absolutely nothing that Diaz can do. Diaz try to lay on the ropes and bait Crawford to come in to bait to, to create exchanges to maybe land a lucky pot punch. But Crawford is just too smart for that. He's just not gonna fall in. Crawford is effectively using his 74 inches reach. Crawford is a master of distance and timing. He's a master of distance and timing. Whoa. In this fight, Terrence Crawford landed 59% of his power shots. 59% of his power shots. Terrence Crawford is so comfortable in the ring. He can have a conversation with some of the commentators. <laughs> Crawford trolling his opponent. He's, he's telling him, I'm not falling for your trap. I'm just not falling for it. Steve Wills. Mm -hmm. Steve Willis telling him, look, let's fight. And... and if you're Felix Diaz, you, you gotta you gotta try something. Felix Diaz, he, he just can't close the gap. Crawford just smoothly slides off the gap. I mean, sm smoothly slides off the line. Look at that. Slid off the line, hit him with a counter uppercut. It's easy work right now. I mean, it's just totally easy work. And this is no shame against Felix, Felix Diaz. It's no shame because, like I say, maybe at the time of this fight, we didn't know that Terrence Crawford was an all-time great. I mean, we knew Terrence Crawford was a great fighter, but we didn't realize he, that he was an all-time great. And God, oh, those counter uppercuts. Oh my goodness. You know, all young boxers should, should study Terrence Crawford, really. He can fight on the inside, on the outside, on the line, in the pocket. Yeah. Joe Diaz stops the fight. That's the right thing to do. No need to take more damage. There's, that was the 10th round, only two more rounds to go. There's absolutely no way that Diaz can land a lucky punch. They were looking to see if Diaz, uh, Diaz can land a lucky punch. But Joel, his coach, looked at the landscape and he realized Crawford is way too smart, way too great to be able to land uh, for Diaz to, to land a lucky punch. So well, why go through two more rounds of total damage? So his coach did the right thing. Again, at the, at the time of this fight, we all knew Terrence Crawford was a 
was a very good fighter, a great fighter even. But we didn't know at this time that he was an all-time great fighter. And I'm saying here, Terrence Crawford is an all-time great fighter. He's an all-time great fighter. A two-way class undisputed champion. No, no male has ever done that before. So he is an all-time great fighter. Um, it's safe to say that. Uh, I'm saying it, you know, I used to say Terrence Crawford is the second best switch hitter. You know, the best since Marvin Hagler. I'm saying he's the best switch hitter. You know, so in my opinion, he surpassed Marvelous Marvin Hagler as the best switch hitter ever. He's just an amazing, an amazing fighter. You know, I, I'm totally in awe of Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford is on an 11 fight KO streak, and this is the second fight of that 11 fight streak. All right, so please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for hanging with us today. Uh, and look, be on the lookout for this next fight against Julius Indago. We out.